Today we're talking about Unior's new digital torque wrench, Series 266. To talk me through that, I have Jore Kurosets, Hi. the man who knows everything about digital torque wrenches and all tools. Jore, tell me about this. So, it's a digital torque wrench, it comes in a box and it should always be kept in a box because it's an instrument, not so much a tool. Mm -hmm. When you open the box, you have inside obviously a torque wrench, cable to connect it to the computer, software for your computer, of course instructions on how to use it and the calibration certificate with a warranty. And this calibration certificate, this is specific to this particular tool this exact tool that we have here. Yeah, when it comes out of the production, it's calibrated and the serial number, which you can find on the torque wrench, is also written here. So you know that it's these measurements were done on this exact torque wrench. And what sort of tolerances are we talking about here? Well, uh, this has a tolerance of plus minus two percentage. So okay. you can see all the errors are inside 1%. Mm -hmm. So it's more than, it's more than enough. It's a super precision tool. Super precision. And that's why it has to live in the box. Of course. Because yeah. any knocking and rattling around is going to knock these calibrations. I mean, it's a sturdy tool, but you really want to keep it... Yeah, like protected. an instrument protected exactly. from, from other tools. So how often does this need to be recalibrated or tested? Every 10,000 times you use it. Okay, so every 10,000 uses, yeah. you would get a, a new certificate from a testing company who would check that this exactly. tool is within its specifications. Exactly. This lives in a box, and when you put this back in the box, do you need to zero this? Because I know with a traditional torque wrench, you need to zero that tool to take some tension off the spring. No, no, uh, it doesn't have a spring, it only has electronic sensors, so you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so this just, when you've finished using it, you just drop it in Drop the box. it in the box, you don't need to even turn it off, it turns itself off after a couple Perfect. of minutes. Perfect, right. Let's get this out and see how yes. this is used. So, in order to start using it, first you have to put in the batteries. It's got an opening here, you can use just a coin to open the... Mm -hmm. And it's on a spring, is it? It's ready to fly across the room. Oh, no. Yeah, it doesn't just fly, oh, it nice. opens nicely. It takes two AA batteries. you can see it's already working. Mm -hmm. We're turned on and ready to go. Yeah. These torque wrenches come in a range of sizes, is that right? Yeah, it's two, three different sizes. Uh, the smaller one goes from 1.5 to 30 Newton meters. The second one goes from 6.8 to 135 Newton meters. And the biggest one goes from 10 to 200. And the size is telling you the range of torques that that device yeah. can handle. It's not exactly. about the traditional quarter inch, three eighths, no, half inch. No, it's got an exchangeable head. So the basically the drive is what you want it to be. You can change it with another one. Oh, okay, you. so you can drive, for example, the small one, three eighths, and then you can change that to be a half yeah. inch. Yeah, now we have a three eighths ratchet head on it. Mm -hmm. We just take a pin, insert it here to press the spring loaded button. That releases the head. Yeah, take another head. This one is half inch and just push it in wow. and that's it. Okay, now we have a half inch yeah. torque wrench. half inch torque wrench. So you exactly. have almost all your sizes in one unit. Yeah, exactly. So we've talked uh, about the different heads for ratchets. There's yeah. other inserts available. What else is there on them? Yeah, we can change it with a flare nut, like this one. It's the same procedure. And now you have a torque wrench with a flare nut on yeah. there. And where would you use this as opposed to a ratchet? Well, basically in automotive, in all the nuts that have a pipe connected, mm -hmm. like brake lines, like uh, fuel lines, cooling system lines. Well, you, so you've got a pipe and a nut that you need to turn and yeah. you can't get on the top of that nut. You need to with the socket, around. you cannot it, or with the uh, ring wrench, you also mm -hmm. cannot, but this one is the perfect for the job. Also, you can attach universal wrench, mm -hmm. adjustable, and then adjust it to the needed size. Aha, uh -huh. so that gives you real flexibility. Yeah. Are these inserts standardized? Can you use interchangeable inserts? Yes, uh, basically there are two standards. The smaller ones use 9 millimeter by 12 millimeter and the bigger wrench uses 18 by 14 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So all the, basically the attachments that go into here are 9 by 12. Let's pop the ratchet back in and talk about the functions of this tool. Yes. Okay, let's see how this tool, it's not a tool, what is it called? Instrument. Instrument. Let's see how this instrument 
is actually used. We've got a cylinder head to play with. Talk me through how you would use this to torque up these camshaft bolts. Yeah, so when you turn it on with the button C, mm -hmm. then you have to set the correct torque. You set it with these two knobs, and up and down. And it goes up by uh, point 0.1 of a point one, yeah. meter? Yeah. Uh, now if you have, let's say, three uh, different torques you need to apply to different bolts. Mm -hmm. What you can also do is preset it. So now you're torquing it to let's say 50, this one to 80 and this one to 110. Yeah. You can preset these torques in so you don't always need to go by 0.1 of a newton meter, just go memory 1, 2 or 3. And sometimes you're torquing these bolts down in stages. So for yes. step one, you're going to do them all down to 50 newton meters. Yeah, you're going to go exactly. Back to 80, you're going to go to 130. Yeah. yeah. You do that by, let's say, go to 10, press M, and now it's under M1. You can see the small letter M with the two now. The two we already preset to 20, and if I now press M again, I have M3, which is preset to 40. Mm -hmm. And it's got uh, nine places for presetting the torque. So you've got nine places in the memory yeah. and it just cycles around. Yeah, when you press M you get to the 9 and then again you get back to 1. This is Newton meters I see on the display. Yeah. Does it do pounds, feet and other... Yeah, you have different four meters. different units. Newton meters, inch pounds, feet pounds and kilograms per square centimeter. And you change the units by pressing this button. Mm -hmm. This is great because with a traditional torque wrench, you only really have one, one or two, two yeah. scales, and they're always very imprecise. You know, the scale runs from 17.6 to 22.3, and you're yeah. trying to calculate in your mind how uh, what the correct setting is. This also saves you converting as well. If of course, a manual which has got pound feet, no need to crunch the numbers. No, just punch them in. This yes. Way. Okay, let's apply some turning force to these camshaft bolts. Yeah. We will put on a socket, it's 10 mil. So we will apply 10 newton meters of torque to these bolts. Okay. We could now go up and down with these knobs, or, but I know that I have preset on M1 for 10 newton meters. So we go around to reach M1, 10 newton meters. Okay. We put the wrench on the bolt and now slowly starting to apply the torque. So when the green light starts to turn on, you are reaching your torque and then when the red goes on, you reached it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that red light comes on, you've hit the torque that you're aiming for. Exactly. And now I see the screen is flashing. What's yeah. that telling When us? the screen is flashing, you have an option to save your result. So this number that's on the screen is the torque that we reached on this bolt. Exactly. And we press M. It's recorded under number one. And how many memories does this have for values? 250. So you can store 250 values that you've tightened these bolts down to. Exactly. Um, and that's useful because you can have a tightening pattern on... Yeah, on the cylinder heads points. there is always a tightening pattern. So mm -hmm. you have to stick to that pattern yeah. and also record it under that number. What can you do with those values? Well, we mentioned the CD with the software at the beginning. You download that software to your computer and when you connect your torque wrench to the computer it makes an Excel file with all your values mm -hmm. inside. So if you're, if you're working your way up an aeroplane wing for example you might be tightening down 35, 50 bolts to the same torque. You yeah. want the exact values of those which you can put into the log for that aircraft rather than write them down individually exactly you can download them from here and save some time exactly can you read them through on the device itself rather than plugging yes. it back into the computer first you long press the us button to enter the menu and then press it shortly number one recorded is 10.2 newton meters mm -hmm. and how do you read the other values you browse it up and down with this two knobs. So you can just browse your way up and down the list yes. and record these as you go. Yes. How do you clear these values now? You press C, it asks you if you want to erase number two and then you press C again as clear and it's now deleted. Mm -hmm. okay. And I see on the screen we have a little P uh, indicator on there. Is that, yes. That's telling us about a particular mode I think. Yeah. 
you press the US button to go out of the menu. Now you again long press it, so it says mode and then you change it with these two knobs. Now it's T as track or P as pick mode. Mm -hmm. Again press it enough to go out of the menu. P stands for pick, mm -hmm. that means when you are applying the torque the maximum value I will reach will be, will be left on the screen. So that's left 10.8 on the screen Yeah. and you can now record that number. Record it or reset it. Manually. Yeah. But if you go in track mode, which is letter T, and now when I'm applying torque, the, num the value goes up and when I'm loosening the wrench, the value goes down. So when we're on peak mode, it locks in that maximum value. The maximum hit, value, yeah. Until you clear it manually. Yes. And in track mode, it simply tracks the torque at the end all the time that you use yes, the tool. Yes, exactly. So we've got a slightly unusual USB cable here. Is there anything we need to know about how to connect this to a computer? Yes. Firstly, what you have to do is long pressing US button. Then press it shortly, a couple of times, to reach this. Then you press the button up and you are in send mode. Mm -hmm. Where you are in send mode, you open the rubber cover, you just insert the cable and the other part of the cable into the computer. And then it's like a memory stick mm -hmm. with all your results. Okay, we've covered the usage and the functions of this. Now, is there a way to set this back to its default values? Yes. You just press the letter C and the up knob, hold it for a couple of seconds and it's reset. So that's like a factory reset? Yeah, if default you find values. yourself lost in the menu or you found some strange function has occurred. And when you have a full memory of, of your stored values, you just reset all of them. All right, great. So that's the Series 266 digital torque wrench yes. covered. I will take away this cylinder head. I'll leave you with the box for this precision instrument. And join us next time.